Hello everyone and welcome to Capital Watch for Friday, March 23rd, our weekly look at legislative news from the state capitol. And joining us from Jefferson City, from the MSBA Governmental Relations offices there is Mike Reed, our Associate Executive Director for Advocacy and our Chief Lobbyist. And Mike, I guess the big news this week in Jefferson City was the House passage of the state budget. Tell us yes, about that. Is. Yes, it was. That's the big news for this week. The House did pass the state budget. This is the first week back from spring break, and the House came back fired up and ready to go on the budget. Uh, we were very fortunate, and uh, uh, we were kept flat, which is great. Actually, we have a $5 million increase in the foundation formula. So uh, in, a, in a very tough time, uh, we, uh, uh, the House is looking out for, for elementary and secondary education. Uh, uh, Representative Sylvie and uh, the members of that committee on uh, both House, Republicans and Democrats, uh, did a, a good job in a very, very tough time when, when uh, money is down. But uh, we, uh, we're very happy. <clears throat> to say we're happy with flat, it means we're, not, we're happy that we didn't get cut and we got a little bit extra. And we really appreciate all the work that they did to find that money for us uh, to support elementary and secondary education. And Mike, while we are very appreciative of what's been done in the House uh, on the budget, certainly uh, given the climate that we're in right now and budget cuts facing other areas of state government, the uh, overall though the foundation formula does remain underfunded compared to where it uh, uh, was envisioned to be at this point, isn't that right? Yes, yes the foundation formula is underfunded and uh, it is supposed to be fully funded by now and it is not. Uh, that is going to create some problems, uh, especially on how is this funding going to work out between Hold Harmless and, and, and Formula Districts. Uh, that is yet to be figured out, and uh, there are pieces of legislation that are still sitting there, uh, moving, uh, not moving, uh, going no place. Uh, that, is a, that is a big concern of what is, uh, what is the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education going to do, and how are we going to uh, solve this problem? Um, it is a, a big push by the education groups to try to get some resolution to this uh, and we you know we wish we had full funding mm -hmm. the Very budget much. the budget now Mike does go over to the to the Senate now for consideration and what is the outlook there and what kind of discussions are going on on the Senate side well, Senator Kurt Schaefer, uh, head of uh, the Senate Budget Committee, is doing a, uh, working very hard on, uh, on, on this budget right now. There are some uh, problems in the Senate. There are a uh, number of senators who are saying they don't want to take uh, the House figures. And if that's the case, there may be some, uh, some big cuts in education. Uh, there's going to be a lot of negotiation, and uh, the next couple of weeks are going to be very, very important uh, on how the Senate looks at, uh, at budgets and and, and where cuts may or may not come. Uh, is it important, Mike, for our members to contact their senators uh, yet to uh, urge support for the House version of the budget? It, it, is, it is very important for our members to, uh, to contact their senators and say, you know, this, uh, the House came through and kept education funding flat with the, the $5.5 million and one dollar increase and uh, to please keep looking at that and to please make sure that elementary and secondary education is not cut because truthfully uh, when the state reduces its funds it is a tax increase on the people back home because we have uh, we have to look at at increasing levies at, at, at home so mm -hmm. it's a it's a dire situation at times another issue that we continue to monitor Mike uh, is the uh, big omnibus education bill on the house side and that's uh, kind of been stalled uh, in the past few weeks but uh, looks like it might uh, reemerge this coming week. Is that right? That's, that's what it looks like. Uh, Speaker Tilly seems to uh, to be giving indications that it might come out this week. Uh, presently, it is stalled in House rules. It's anticipated that uh, after next Tuesday, after the close of filing, this may see the light of day and may come out for discussion on the House. Um, so it may come out of House rules at that time and be discussed. It's extremely important that uh, our members keep contacting their reps and telling them that uh, 1740 is not good for public education. The biggest problem that we have is the, is the uh, tuition tax credit voucher part of this piece of legislation. Many of the representatives will say it's not a voucher bill, but it's a tax credit bill that, that reduces the amount of money that goes to public education, can go to public, can go to general revenue, i.e. public education at that point in time. It's a reduction because it's a tax credit and tax credits come right off the top of state money. It, in fact, is a voucher bill, and uh, uh, we believe that that's not best for public education. 
And Mike, another problem with that bill is that it includes so many different issues that are all bundled together, some of which are quite complex and deserve to be considered on their own, aren't, aren't they? They do. They do. That has a number of issues in there. There's charter schools in there. There's uh, expansion of charter schools. There's uh, a formula fix. Uh, there's some other Turner fix uh, questions in there. There's a question of uh, tenure, uh, a number of things, and those need to be debated on their own merits. Many of those pieces of legislation we can support, and we do support. Uh, however, that uh, the passport scholarship is the part that we cannot support and will not. Another bill, Mike, that seems to be moving along is uh, a bill, House Bill 1174, that uh, deals with state intervention in unaccredited districts. Where are we on that? Yes, that bill was heard in the Senate this week. Uh, it passed the House, and uh, I anticipate it will come out of the Senate committee next Wednesday. Uh, that gives the state school board more latitude in working with districts that become unaccredited. Presently, there's a two-year waiting period before the state board can step in to an unaccredited district. That stops that two-year waiting period. It gives the state board uh, the ability to put uh, in a, in a special administrative board or to work with the elected school board and to work with the community to see how best to meet the problems of each individual community when the school becomes unaccredited. Another issue we're concerned about, Mike, is uh, over on the Senate side, Senate Joint Resolution 47, which is a proposed constitutional amendment, and uh, it deals with what is commonly known as the Blaine Amendment to the Missouri Constitution. Tell us about that. It does. Uh, this was, uh, it was brought up and, and put on the informal calendar, which means it can be brought off the informal calendar anytime for discussion. It changes and, and puts in front of the people the ability to remove the Blaine Amendment from the Constitution. The Blaine Amendment says that no state funds can be used to support a parochial school, uh, private or religious school. Uh, we believe that public money should go to public education. Do not take this that we do not believe that uh, private education has a place and we support people who send their, student, their students to private schools. Uh, however, we don't believe that public money should, uh, should follow those students. All right, Mike, looking ahead to next week then, I guess uh, a couple of the big issues again are the budget over on the Senate side and uh, perhaps uh, House Bill 1740, is that right? That's, that's correct. So uh, please uh, watch your emails because we will be sending out emails for alerts if, if we need it, uh, if we need you to keep uh, contacting your reps and your senators, as we always do. Uh, also, if you're, uh, we still have our S Band uh, visits every Tuesday. Uh, hopefully, if you have not come down yet, uh, you will be coming. And if not, uh, if, you, if you missed your times, your weeks that, was, that were to be here, Please go ahead and come down any Tuesday. We'd love to have our members. It's a great opportunity to meet and discuss what's going on at the Capitol with your state representative and your senator. All right, Mike Reed, thanks a lot for being with us as always on our Capitol Watch program. And again, we'll be keeping you informed through our Legislative Voice newsletter that we email to you every Friday, as well as our daily blog posted on the website for daily updates on the legislature. Be sure and check that. And uh, we hope you can join us again next week for another edition of MSBA's Capital Watch.